All right, so on that note, I wanna welcome Juanita. Let me grab my phone so I have my questions ready. I wanna welcome Juanita. Um, I'm so excited that she's here. Um, she is <laughs> one of our major success stories in many ways, um, in many, many, many ways. Um, she's one of our first international clients. Uh, so I, I, I know that's I didn't like know a, that. <laughs> huh? I, I didn't know that I was like one of the first international clients. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, and I was just like, okay, well, I love it that she's trusting, you know, because a lot of times people are like, is this going to work in my country? Is this? I'm like, Google's everywhere, y'all. Instagram's everywhere. Like, all these things are everywhere. But I, yeah, she's one of our first international um, clients. Um, and they're just, they're just so many things about Juanita, your attitude, your story, everything. That's, that's amazing. But um, yeah, first, I want to say, do you mind letting us know uh, where you're based, the name of your company, and um, and since we just finished talking about story, what you specialize in? Yeah, um, so hi, I'm Juanita. I'm originally from Thailand. I'm based in Frankfurt, Germany, but um, my weddings are in Thailand. I specialize in multicultural and destination weddings. I do uh, intimate weddings and um, I personalized experience on the wedding day. My clients know me for um, their personalized timeline. Like I don't do um, cookie cutter templates. I ask them what they want to experience, what they want to feel on the day, any cultural element that they want to bring in, but maybe they don't want it to be so traditional, then we can like modify it or simplify it in the way that makes sense for them. Awesome. Excellent. See how clear that was, y'all? I love it. I love it. All right. Um, and for how many years have you been a, a wedding planner? Um, actually, only three years. So um, my business started in 2019 and I was planning my own wedding. Um, during that time, I was thinking already that I want to become a wedding planner, but I really want to see my wedding come to life first, you know, to see that like, okay, I can make this. Um, and yeah, then uh, it, it was like really uh, the best day ever. Um, all our friends love it. Uh, a lot of them say this is like one of the best weddings that they have been to. So I just continued from there and then COVID happened. Uh, but then uh, our situation in Thailand is very different from like the Western world because uh, in Thailand in 2019, 2020, we still have weddings, like nothing was going on because we closed our country very early. Um, so the, the weddings was uh, like, the city was continuing like, like normal until early 2021. Then that was like really tough time. And then the country reopened again at end of uh, 2021. And that's when like things start to pick up again. Um, mm -hmm. Before that, I was working as a um, content creative, and I also do corporate events. Then I was a flight attendant for four years, so I bring in my experience in uh, corporate events management and also the travel. And that's why my niche is, is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, all right um uh, explains you know the comfort we're going from Thailand and Germany all the time because you're used to being on planes um all right so how long I don't know if this is really relevant because I know you you say you've been in business for three years but how long did you want to go full-time uh, of course from the beginning but um I had to you know like take time to build a foundation of my business uh this is actually like my first business ever before I was uh, in a full-time job so that was like a huge shift for me um, and then uh, I, I booked my first clients about like five months in when I started, but because of the situation, um, a lot of people kind of like hesitating to book and things like that. I try to, um, this is like something that I really want to do. I really want to make it happen. So during the time I was doing other job and one of which was also as a SEO content writer, um, which um, yeah, then that's why when I learned from the program and using the SEO strategy, it's, it's, it changed my life. 
Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, it's so funny because I mean, and I can send this interview to everybody else, but there's someone else who was in our program who um, had a, mar a master's in marketing right before joining our program, but she's still like, oh my gosh, the things I learned, I was able to implement and it, it changed. So it's, it's exciting that you were, you were in SEO content creation. What we just talked about, there's so many SEO agencies, but still coming in and learning exactly what's going to work for our industry and for your business was what, was what changed things. So I think... Um, all right. Uh, before we get deeper into that, what made you? Okay, so let's let's go into the SEO. When you first joined the, the program, obviously you you actually already had some blog posts and some other things that were already ranking and were already doing well. But the challenge that they weren't converting into business, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, which is what I just said earlier when it came to blogging, right? Not blogging like you're like Brides Magazine type of thing. I always like to use that example. I love Brides. I love them. I love all of them. But our our end goal is different than the, than their end goal, right? Their end goal is just site visits. Our end goal is the conversions. So what would you say, what changes, what are the biggest changes that you think you made, right? Um, that helped you to go full-time? It doesn't have to be only about marketing. I know this is like the tail end of marketing, but since we have your time, uh, just what would you say if there were like two or three of the biggest things that, that made a difference in moving the needle in your business so you could go full-time? I think the first like huge shift was the mindset that being a wedding planner is a luxurious job. Not everyone needs us. Like throughout the whole time from the beginning, I, um, I'm thinking about like selling my value, right? And uh, I know how much of a, a hassle or like the stress that wedding planners can have if a couple hire one. Mm -hmm. But the truth is not every couple needs wedding planner. You know, there, there are like some weddings that um, the bride does makeup by herself. So let alone wedding planners. And so um, I think when this shift, I start focusing more on the client that actually needs wedding planners. And then I go back and talk to uh, like my full service clients on uh, why do you book me? Why do you feel like you need a wedding planner? Um, what? Like, do you like about our, our work together, our experience together so far? And then I'm focusing on selling that message on my website and like social media, because that would be the things that people who need wedding planners are looking for. Mm -hmm. um, then the second would be like a wedding specific marketing plan and sales plan. And that's also includes SEO. Um, I would say like, I, I like educational stuff, you know, but the thing is our industry is built entirely differently. Like you cannot go to a marketing course and apply to wedding business because our clients think differently. The, the industry operates differently. And when uh, we understand what the clients are looking for and what they are expecting, what they want to see, what make them decide to book with us, um, then Oh, I understand what I have to do more of. And then that brings more inquiry. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing that I learned from the program so would be the, the system refinement. Um, like you said earlier, that is about strategy and not about like putting more hours. This is actually uh, good for us as wedding planners and also clients because they don't expect to spend more time than, than they should have, you know. So the easier it seems for them, the, the easier uh, it helps them make decision, book something, um, the better it is for the experience and for us as well. So I think these are like the, the three huge shifts. That those, been, yeah. big. those are big. I wasn't even expecting those answers. Those are really big. I oh, mean, okay. like the first one, not everybody needs a wedding planner. This is why I tell people, I mean, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't really care. The average cost of wedding, like we talked about earlier in the U.S. is $35,000. That already tells you not everybody can afford a $5,000 wedding planner, even a $3,000, because if that's the average, there's some people who are going to be below average, right? So what that means is that you have to stop trying to prove yourself to people who don't even want what you're doing. But what Juanita just said, like, instead of trying to prove yourself to people who don't even want it, trying to bashing people for choosing to go with something cheaper or do something on their own or whatever, shift your energy to finding the people who actually want what you're gonna, what you, what you offer, right? Like shifting to people who want a wedding planner instead of trying going on this crusade to prove to everybody that everybody needs an event planner, right? 
the other thing um, that you talked about was um, wedding specific marketing, and that is 100% facts. You know, a lot of marketing coaches will tell you that you need to nurture people for a few months, but in a few months, that person who inquired probably already has a wedding planner, a venue, and possibly even a photographer. They may have even already done their engagement shoot. So you don't have that time. You know, I mean, in some cases, people do take a while to book, but on average, they're, they're not. So you don't have months to nurture somebody on the newsletter, right? It's got to be different. Even your SEO strategy has got to be different everything's got to be different right and in our industry because of the way that you know we got to find people at the right place especially for us we're at the top if someone's going to book your full service they're going to book you're one of the first people they're going to book in some cases they may book a venue before you but that's probably going to be it right so you so it's like you, we have to be able to look when you when you understand that it's it's totally different than a lot of other things um and the last thing you said was systems i mean it's not about the the I tell people like, the amount of hours I spend on a wedding now versus when I first started is night and day. I spend significantly less time with a much better outcome, right? And my busy brides who have a lot of money to spend get to have hours of their time back. They get to enjoy life and their engagement as opposed to set, you know, us texting back and forth nonstop every day, all day for 12 months, which is basically adding stress as opposed to removing it from them. One of my favorite things that my clients say, I was with one on Saturday and she just kept saying, I know I keep asking you this, but should I be stressed? Because everybody's telling me I should be stressed, but I'm not stressed. And I'm like, you could be stressed if you want to, but you don't need to, right? It's just like, yeah, everything's just moving along smoothly. Like, yeah, with, with systems processes, that's, that's the difference, right? And there's value in that. There's value, there's more value in giving somebody a smooth experience than giving than in just standing next to them through a difficult experience. Just the fact that you're just there with them, but it's difficult and they have to spend all these hours. There's more value in just making it smooth. Right. Um, especially for people, the more affluent people get, the more they value their time. So if time is the most valuable thing to them, the fact that you're saving them time is more valuable. So I think I had just had to reiterate because everything you said was amazing. Um, so what advice do you have for planners who are, you know, they know that they're good. They, they plan well, all that, but they're struggling to get people who are willing to book their full service package. A lot of people struggle with this, uh, with getting people to actually buy full service, right? They may offer it, but get high, what, what advice would you have for, for, for someone? Um, I would say if you already have a full service clients, then definitely go back to chat with them. Um, you'd be surprised how like you know uh, exciting they are or like how very helpful they are to share the information on their decision making on what they need and how you have helped them and um, while talking to them you know like uh, taking notes and using the words that they use on your marketing materials um, because that would be like the connection that you will have for your future clients mm -hmm. um, and then I think also is uh, the other important thing is, of course, to invest in the education um, from like experts that are doing what you aspire to do, you know, like to be already where you want to be, um, because learning from them is, is like um, the best investment that you ca can do for your business and yourself. Then you also, um, I I also like really am fortunate to find a lot of people in the industry that, you know, we, we kind of like share the same goal. We want weddings to be special, to be personal, to be meaningful in years to come in the marriage and finding people in the industry who share the same value towards your work is also like really um, a great support when something happens, like, you know, you have COVID or like, or something changed, price increase and things like that, you have this group of the people who um, support you and understand what you're going through. And I think that is like really um, a great, like a great asset, <laughs> yeah, that you have. I love it, I love it. So many things, so many things. So what's next on the horizon for you? Um. I want to continue focusing on uh, Thailand weddings first. Um, and now I, I've booked two clients, two couples that they book me for the whole week. So like they have their wedding, but then they also want to have a welcome dinner, rehearsal dinner, a brunch after. And they book me for the whole week to arrange everything. And I really, really enjoy that because I like to travel. I like to um, you know, eat different food. I want to show them everything in my country. Um, so I, 
I'm focusing on like working with them and will soon like publish like a entire different package for this because I really enjoyed it. Um, and then maybe like in two or three years, I want to have a full um, service or like multi-days wedding in Europe. I actually plan for like to start this next year, but now I'm getting a lot of inquiries. I'm almost booked out for, for, for next year already. Um, so I was like, okay, like just can wait and let me experiment with the Thailand wedding week first. And um, I still want to do the multicultural weddings in Europe because um, there are a lot of us, you know, who move from different countries and it's really hard to find someone who understand our cultures or like celebrate that in the way that um, we uh, feel meaningful or we, we want to happen for our family. So this is like still a really great potential market that I want to explore as well. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay. And so why did you decide to start working? Why did you decide to join Planners Who Profit? And what would you say? So what would you say um, to anyone who's considering it or who's like nervous about investing or nervous about getting a coach or nervous about, let's say, if I was to send just this clip to someone who didn't join us here, nervous about spending any money. Like, why should I have to spend money to learn, um, to, to, to invest in something? Like, what, what, what advice would you have for them? And why did you join? Yeah, uh, so one thing that really clicked me until now is like um, uh, on your Clubhouse sessions and also on your sales page is that um, a lot of courses, and I'm one of those who, you know, like uh, buy bundles, um, a lot of courses and bundles um, they are good for the time being, but they shouldn't be a permanent solution and they are not designed to work together as a whole. So mm -hmm. um, during like er earlier time in uh, my business, I was like, okay, getting this bundle, that bundle, I would take something that I'm like, okay, this is the solution I need for this specific problem, but then I wouldn't know what to do next or what to go from there. And mm -hmm. I am basically exhausted from doing that. I want something more. I want someone who understands the entire process that I want to do. And um, since like working with Coach Fei, I feel that uh, the important thing that I also like renew uh, the program as well is that um, Coach Fei also always asks for context. Because I live in a different country, you know, the way weddings are happening that entirely different than the niche, than the cultural element. Um, I can share context and then Coach Fei can provide advice that really suits my situation. I also really like the fact that the program provides a critique. And this is really, uh, it's been really helpful for me because I would set the time in the week when I would watch the critiques video that I, you know, like share from my work and then Coach Faye would say, okay, please adjust this, adjust that and things like that. And then I would implement directly and I will see the change happening. So like all together, um, this is the reason I join and stay in the program. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I love when you said putting together bundles doesn't really work. <laughs> it yeah. does a lot of people have different approaches. People are going at different depths and a lot of times it's missing context. So um, it's just about following one system, you know, you know, following it. And then also, of course, customizing it to you and having guidance along the way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I love it. Does anyone have any other questions about uh, for Juanita about her journey to, to going full time in business? Let me check the chat about Sammy. Any questions? Um, if, and, I, and I hope if you guys don't mind in the chat, just... Uh, just thanking Juanita for taking some time to join us. I mean, I know you're staying for the rest of it. So if you guys have any questions, you can also drop them in the chat for her. 